Now this bass has already gone through several mods. A sixth string, baritone tuning, sliding pickup. So why not one more? Fretless. Somewhere between a guitar and bass already, this instrument seems like the perfect thing to satisfy my fretless curiosity. Not just to copy the techniques of an upright bass, but to try something different like you might do on the more elusive fretless guitar. Something like bar chords or even a more metal tone on top of that clean classical finger picking sound we're used to. I kind of thought it'd be something as simple as pull and play, but this turned out to be something way more involved, and I actually did do some research this time before jumping straight in. So let me walk you through the process, or as always, you can just skip to the demo straight away using this timestamp. This is Kevin from Said Too Much. Taking off all the strings, which happened to be a combination of round and flat wound strings in another interesting project by the way, I started scoring any glue that might be holding onto the frets along their outer edge for good measure. Luthiers usually have a special tool to remove frets, which are often just a simple pair of carpenter's pincers that have modified to be flat on the tip. Or I've also seen tutorials suggesting to use a flattened back pair of wire cutters. But brainstorming a makeshift tool that used the same concept of getting underneath the outer edges of the frets, I came upon this nail removing crowbar tool in my arsenal. The other side of smaller hammers might work too, I'm guessing. I wet the fret a little, heated it up with a regular soldering iron to help release the glue, and gently worked at prying up one side at a time. Now I have to warn you to be careful and try this at your own risk. The tool slipped several times and nicked my hand occasionally. Good idea to place the one you're not using a little further away. I also scraped the fretboard a couple of times, but with little damage. We're gonna be essentially refinishing it anyways. Slow and steady, it seemed like the final few frets got easier as I went along, but maybe I was just getting the hang of it. With all the frets removed, I ran a hacksaw through the empty slots to help clear and clean them. Then I grabbed any scrap wood I could find around one millimeter thick. My research showed me that you couldn't even just leave these slots empty even if you wanted to, because the neck would warp way too much. You need some kind of solid material in there to help keep it reinforced. I saw some people using wood filler, but if you have the means or can find something at your local craft store, it seems like cutting shims down to size to fit every slot is the way to go. Some ended up thinner than others, but securing them with a liquid superglue left me feeling confident. Letting that dry, the next step was to sand it all down. I went from a 120 grit to a 240 until it all felt smooth to me, and I couldn't see any of that excess super glue. Make sure to match the radius when you're doing this too. You really don't want a perfectly flat fretboard. Now with more liquid super glue, I first cleaned off the surface with a damp paper towel, and then applied a uniform layer completely over the top. With 24 hours in between, I did this a total of three times, again trying to make sure it was as uniform as possible. It didn't look like the prettiest finish at first, but after one more round of sanding with a thousand grit and up, it's beautiful and ready to be strung up. I went with the original baritone tuning we started with this time, and some final setup includes tightening that truss rod a little more and setting the action as low as we can, especially at the nut. I also shimmed the bridge saddles, but you may find you don't have to. Now we're good to go.
thoughts. What do you all think? A fairly straightforward mod or something a little more involved than you may have thought? Is it a design better left for classical stylings or something with a little more potential? Of course, learning to play fretless is probably like learning a new instrument entirely, and I'm sure I missed a few tips and tricks to try. There's no way I could be the first person to mess outside of the normal fretless bass techniques either, so if you guys know of any artist or band that have messed with this kind of stuff also, please let us know in the comments. The tone actually reminds me more of a synth with a crazy portamento and the ability to subtly detune. Of course, we can also mess around with more microtonal stuff, something which a lot of you had been suggesting since the start of this channel. In my soprano guitar videos, I actually also dabbled with the fretless design to help eliminate the problem of fitting your fingers between those ridiculously close frets. You can judge those results for yourself over at that video. Now I'm sure we haven't seen the last of this bass and could probably pile on a couple more ideas, right? For now though, enough said. For early video access, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much.